a quick climbing tutorial, dropping during rider, how I did it, etc, etc. Alright, so again, on Cherry Hill, here's the turnaround point just at this building. Make sure you take it fast, um, and then straight back onto the segment, because the segment starts right then. So it's smashed up to 600, chasing Dan. Dan, I bet him off day, poor bloke, but um, he's just broken, we broke his leg about like four months ago, so he's super strong already, and he's a very big lad, he's 86 kilos, and he can often rival me in the hills, which means he's putting out some serious power. Um, so this is, yeah, it's a good climb, sort of, I described it as a bass climb, because it's like very steep, sort of 12% average, 12-13% average, there's some real ramps, but it's got some hairpins on it, uh, so you can see here, we're not, we're not going crazy, like, Dan's surging, he doesn't have a power meter, unfortunately, his power meter's broken, so he's not, he's not running exactly to power, and I was just going to hold his wheel, because I thought he was going to get a real good time, uh, so at the moment, I'm just holding it. You know, there's some surging up to 400 or whatever, but mainly it's mainly it's okay. I was looking to hold about 340 to 350 watts for this. I knew an eight minute F I can hold that, and it, it's not it's not easy, but it's not like mind numbingly hard. I think if I was going for a full gas TT and there was someone faster, I could hold probably hold about 360, which would be about six watts per kilo uh, for around 10 minutes probably. So for maybe this, maybe up to 370. I don't know. I need to ha I need to have a look. I need to do a bit more training. Um, a lot of my stuff now is focused more on longer efforts, like threshold stuff, sweet spots. So uh, I haven't really done too many short VO2 efforts. You can see here the power's really gone down to 240, 275. I remember looking down at my gun when I was at 275. I was like, hang on a minute. If I'm going to get a PR on this, I, uh, I need to need to gas, get a bit of gas on and uh, go. So you can see it's a really quiet road. No one's here, basically. I think we saw one car when we were descending, but, you know, it's good. It's good roads here in Adelaide. There's pretty much zero traffic uh, on a lot of these quiet roads. This is pretty much a dead end, so the only people coming down here are cars, so who live here, and that's uh, not very many people. So you can see Dan, is a, he doesn't push his bike enough. Um, he sort of moves his body instead of the bike, um, which I think he could definitely improve on. Uh, you can see the heart rate's coming up a bit at 183. Max is about 201 to 205, so 183 I can hold for a good hour or something, half an hour, 40 minutes maybe, I don't know. Um, but you can see my cadence, so I'm on the 36.28. It just wasn't really big enough. Here it's all right, but I, I prefer to be about 90. Um, so I, I should get the 36.34, 36.32. I have a 32 on the back, but fortunately, it's a bit of problems with the short cage, um, short cage rear mech. Um, so I'm going to go get that fixed at some point. But at the moment, there's so much riding about time to get the bike fixed. There's every day I'm riding with a pro team or doing KOM efforts. I don't have time to go get my bike fixed. So you can see we're surging up a bit here, but... I think soon I was like, right, I've had enough. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go get past Dan. But you can see here it's like 10%. It suddenly looks like we're flying. We're going 18 k's an hour. So you can see that. But like, um, we could definitely um, we could definitely go a lot faster than this because we were struggling at some parts. And um, and the power here is like too. Yeah, it surges a lot. There's a lot of surging. When I looked down at my average, it was a lot higher than I thought. This because I think I was responding to the surging a lot. Um, so you get a different camera angle here of Dan. I've been raising the kind of cut the corner, but there's no traffic, so it's sort of acceptable. Um, and here I'm like, right, put it in the low, well, put it in the same gear, spin up to about 110 cadence. There you go, up to 380, 400, and then round, to, round we go. I thought he'd just hold my wheel. I, I didn't know he's having some, some difficulties, but I think um, I think he's still recovering, which is, to be fair, it's um, he's putting a great effort considering how, how big he is. I mean, this is a pure climber. I'm mean, 60 kilos, and this this is something that I should just be destroying people like Dan, who are so heavy. But unfortunately, he's such a good rider, I can't do that. But you can see that I'm out of the saddle here. The cadence has dropped again, but you can see that really in Adelaide, you, a 36.28 is just not low enough. It might be low enough if you do stupid small climbs or like Norton Summit or whatever. But if you if you're trying to push yourself on the mm -hmm. steep stuff, you need good cadence and you need good gears. And the good gearing, you really need at least a 34. 28, 34, 32, that would be ideal. I'd say it depends on your power. Obviously, if you're if you're faster, then maybe you need a little less gear. But if you're slower, then you probably need more gear. I mean, it's all about just getting appropriate gear in for the riding you do and the speed that you can go up these climbs. So you can see here again, cadence is quite low, but we're holding good power here. I was actually surprised how much um, we're doing. This is a really steep head, and some people like to surge up on the outside. I like sort of doing a bit of a sideways thing where I don't take the most direct line. I sort of just curve around so I can keep the power relatively uh, relatively similar uh, and you can see here it, it's starting to flatten off we're starting to pick up the speed a bit just trying to hold that power when it flattens off that's one thing that is definitely you can really focus on it even if you're not going hard just try and keep 240 watts or 250 watts whatever watts that you want 400 watts and just keep it on the flat and the climb and the really steep stuff and i think that's a lot of people 
can do one or the other. They can go on the flat and then go on the steep stuff. But when it changes, people find it really hard. But it's really good to practice doing that. Because you see, again, it's reared up here up to 400 watts almost. Um, so it's good. It's a good climb. Really liked it. It's just, yeah, it's just so many climbs like this in Adelaide. Like every, every, every sort of little alleyway you go down, and suddenly a 20% climb is like, oh, I'll try and get KOM. And, and the people here are fast. Like this is, this is quite a good time. I think it'll end up being about 5.7 watts per kilo for the um, eight minutes. So you know, it's not incredible power. It's not like world tour power or professional pro quantity power, but it's, it's, it's like solid for an amateur. Um, and yeah, that four, three people beat me or something. So uh, you can see the power is definitely. Um, there's a strong people in Adelaide, but here, look, it's going down to 260. I can push more. I think if I had someone in front of me, I definitely could have pushed harder. And it's one of those things where at the end, you're done and you're like hurting, but you're not like, oh my god, I can't go any harder. That was absolute death. It was more like, this hurts quite a lot. I need a rest for like two or three minutes and then I'm fine. Um, to be fair, like the problem with these time trials is that you're not really going full gas because you still have to get home. Like after this, I then end up riding about 80, 90 k's with the um. Or, no, about 70k's with, with Katusha, so I didn't want to cook myself. I didn't know I was going to do that, but I knew I was going to bribe with the protein, so I wanted to make sure I wasn't absolutely cooked. Uh, so you can see here it flams off when you go around the corner. Uh, this is when you, you either press on or you recover. For me, I was just trying to keep 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 the speed up. Often on these climbs, it's like a battle of momentum. When you when you go a bit faster, you get a bit more momentum, you can sort of push a bit harder up the saddle. And when you're in a low gear, it's really important to um, try and keep that keep that momentum going as much as possible like here it, um you can see it's a battle ramp up just around the corner and i'm really trying to i know it's going to ramp up and i'm trying to just keep that speed get get in the right gear before so i don't have to do any really dodgy gear changing because you'll notice i do end up gear changing on this climb because i don't go down to the 32 and realize i can't use it because it makes some horrible noise but i then realize i'm like right okay i have to change gears but i have to do it like a micro maybe even just like half a second where you don't pedal and that really does slow you down and then you have to accelerate back up to speed um, so you can see here we're 10 k's an hour, um, and this bit here is really when I was hurting. I was out of the saddle. So I've, <laughs> I mean, normally I'm like, right, I won't get out of the saddle because I know the viewers. Viewers often complain that they can't see, they can't, well, they can't see anything. It's shaky. But here, sorry lads, uh, sorry lads and lasses, but I had no gears left. I had 50 k, 58 k, and it's out of the saddle. I was like, so some old school Frenchy bloke who's like out the saddle and just yeah, just go and feel, mate, and just like, just, just killing myself up this climb, but. You can see the power's not as high as it should be. Like, it's just, it's just like when you get in the low cadence. It, sometimes it's good to do a little bit of low cadence just to work different muscle groups and also just work a different engine system, a different system. So instead of doing cardiovascular, you do more of the sort of muscular and use a lot more like sugars that's stored in your muscles instead of your um, your oxygen, which is coming from your, from your cardiovascular system. So it's good to you know change it up. Sometimes people like to sprint at the very last because they're suddenly like use all that cardio and they had their legs are still relatively fresh in terms of like on a low cadence effort but here it was there was no choice about it i just had to do had to go low um, low cadence you can see it here i'm pretty much on the same gear 36 28 and just spinning slightly better um and now so it's a it's a good climb really enjoyed it um all right, sorry about that. We're going to have no power data for the last part because the GoPro footage ended up messing up. But anyway, I was doing about 300, 300 330, 340 up here and just really trying to hold, hold the power, hold the cadence. And I knew it was going to flatten off. And the thing is, when you know it's going to flatten off, is you can't, you can't like hold in anything. You just have to go full gas now and just sprint out the saddle. That's what I was trying to do. Push, 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 push. You have to think like, this is it. This is this is the end. Like, this is what you've been suffering for eight minutes. If you, if you mess it up now, What's the point of doing it? You, you just like you could easily lose ten seconds here if you don't push all the way to the line. So I didn't know exactly where the line was, but I knew I just had to push all the way to the road, all the way, all the way. I think here was when I lapped my goal and I was like, my my who? Sorry, I was like, right, that's enough. Um, so yeah, take a Yui. Um, we'll see. Dan and Hayden also came on the ride. He's a solid bloke. Uh, good, good, good young climber as well. He's about six kilos. Raced for an NRS team, so he's very strong as well. Um, so cheers for watching. And I'll see you in the next bit.